You know, a manufactured part inspection, we're all familiar with the way that machine parts are typically inspected. You can use a, a classic CMM, a ball bar, a laser scanner, but what if your parts are larger with an unusual conformation like Bent 2 products? I'm with Scott Martin, he's regional manager for Hexagon Manufacturing Intelligence. And Scott, we're looking at a deceptively simple rover arm here, and, and this is configured to inspect this fairly complex two part. Tell me about it. Correct. Uh, the Romer portable arm uh, was actually invented first to measure tubing. So we've actually got a non-contact probe that has infrared light beams. So what I do is I scan down over all the straights, it creates all the intersection points, compares that to the blueprint XYZ points. So in the software here, we plugged in all the XYZ data. You can also bring in a CAD model of your part and it'll automatically extract your XYZ data. So once we plug that in, I come down and hit the measure button and it actually highlights where it wants the operator to measure. So all I do is I scan down over the part, two scans for each straight. It's gonna have me do a measurement on the end and then move me on to the rest. So on a 180 degree bend, it'll ask us to take a couple measurements in the bend and then it moves us on to our next straight. Again, all non-contact, so if you have tubing that's say eighth inch uh, diameter tubing, real flimsy, this is perfect because you don't want to touch those tubes. And then it'll have us measure the second end. And at the end, it gives us all of our nominal and measured data. A lot of vendors go by LRA data, which is length, rotation, angle. Yes. We have that type of data. We also have all of your XYZ intersection points. So at the end, you have your, your nominal, your measured, your deviations. We can also talk directly to a vendor. So we can come down to a vendor link and say, send this information right back to the vendor. It does the corrections on the vendor automatically. That second part that comes out is usually perfect. Wow. <laughs> as close to perfect as you can get. Now that took perhaps a minute or less than a minute to do it's that entire very scan. quick. Interestingly, it didn't require you to physically drag that yoke through the entire part. Exactly. Some of the older systems out there, you would have to just drag a, a probe around it. So this is just super quick, super easy. Now on the screen, it appeared that it led you by the hand in the sense that if it doesn't have enough data, it'll, you have a little red flash that says yep. do it again. And so it'll beep at you if you, okay. like on the, you always measure on the straight part of the tube. Yep. If you measure on the radius, it'll beep at you and say, hey, remeasure that point. So it's a very intuitive software. Like I said, guides the operator right through everything real, real simple. It, it can data quite quickly, and, that, and that's that's a critical thing with tubing that I think is a little different from machine parts. Machine parts typically you can establish zero data, and you can measure everything off that. Correct. But tubing is sort of like that odd kind of noodle. It's its own world. <laughs> it is its own world, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. It's a, There's a yeah. lot more variables to, to tubing. I mean, you could have, you're going to measure this tube, you've got a supply of 100 tubes, you bend them all, they all bend the same, you get the next set of 100 tubes, they may not bend exactly the same. So this tells you from one set of tubes to the to the next, if you're doing everything correct. Now, in terms of fixturing, do you need to lock this down um, in a very rigid place? This is, I mean, the only thing you have to worry about, it doesn't matter how it's sitting, I could move this in this clamp any way I wanted, as long as when you're measuring, the base of the machine doesn't move and your part doesn't move. That's where that non-contact's really nice, because if you had to use, say, a, a ball-type probe, mm -hmm. and I had a real thin tube, I go to touch, even on this, you can see the tube vibrate a yes, little bit. Yeah, yeah. So you don't want to touch it. That's best case scenario. Yes. As long as the part doesn't move and your machine doesn't move, you're good to go. Yeah, a hot shop in an in a environment, even uh, in Chicagoland, where we're standing right now, for example, and the, the difference between the, the first bend in the morning in the afternoon could be 20 or 25 or 30 degrees in temperature Could different. Be different. And, and will automatically temperature compensate for that? It, uh, it, it automatically knows, yeah, temperature changes. The, the coefficient of expansion on the carbon fiber is so minute that it's just a, basically a non-factor. I've done demonstrations up in northern Minnesota in the middle of the winter. I'll have this machine in my truck overnight. Uh, I, did, I did a demonstration where it was 30 degrees below zero the night before my demo. Went to my demo, it was five minutes away from my hotel. Pull the, pull the machine into the, into the shop. They put me in a room that's 80 degrees. The machine starts sweating. The guys give me a ring gauge and have me measure it. I hit it within two tenths. <laughs> ice cold, so <laughs> temperature's a non-factor. Teach everybody in the shop to do it, really easy.
easy to use, non-contact measurement as possible on the shop floor for fabricated parts, says Scott Martin at Excon Manufacturing Intelligence.